few really wild animals out there. Have you ever wondered? What's on the menu when a chimp chows down? Is this gorilla as grouchy as he looks? Why do monkeys always monkey around? And what's all the racket about anyway? Well, the answers are all ahead, so hang on. It's National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. <laughs> Hey, it's me, Spin! Just thought I'd drop in, cos today we're gonna be... Oh! As I was saying, today we're going to be hanging with some of my favourite animals. Primates! That's right, primates! They're a swinging, screaming, singing group of animals that includes monkeys and apes. And I'm not the only one who likes them. At the zoo, primates are just about everyone's favourite animal. I think it's because they're a lot like... people. <laughs> yes! People are part of the primate group. You're right! You're a primate too! Today we're going to hang with our hairy relatives to find out what being a primate is all about. Let the monkey business begin. See those monkeys in the trees? They sure do love to swing. They're a noisy howling, screaming bunch when they're doing their monkey thing. They're grooming one another, showing off for a friend or two. It's monkey see and monkey do. Primates, primates, let's give a big thumbs up for primates, primates, whoa. What do all primates have in common? Well, they have two arms and two legs. They can stand or sit up straight, which leaves their hands free to do other things, like grab stuff, which is a lot more than your dog can do. Oh, and don't forget one other handy primate trait, opposable thumbs. Opposable means their thumbs can bend to touch all of their fingers so they can use their hands to hold things. Most animals can't do that. If you think opposable thumbs aren't important, uh, try eating without them. All primates, except for humans, even have an opposable toe on each foot. Wouldn't that be great for picking up your socks? They also come in handy, a uh, footy, <laughs> for just hanging around, especially in trees where many primates live. Another thing most primates have in common is their big brains. And you know what they say, big brain, smart animal. <laughs> in fact, scientists have found that primates are some of the most intelligent animals around. Hey, 
Who's testing who around here anyway? Primates have fairly flat faces, with eyes facing front, not on the sides like most animals. Most primates see in full color, too. This helps them separate the fruits from the roots, the figs from the twigs, and the berries from the... the... Um, oh, you get the idea. <laughs> Last but not least, most primates are social animals. They're always around friends and family. They like to hang with the gang and play lots of games. And they hug and kiss to say hi. Of course, primates do get on each other's nerves once in a while. And when they do, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> but don't worry, by dinner all will be forgiven because most primates are terrific at um, uh, communicating and um, making up. Ah, oh, isn't that sweet? Welcome to the show that's more fun than a barrel full of orangutans. It's, you call that a primate? Our first contestant is Coco from Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. It's up to you to figure out if she's a primate or not. Okay, she's getting up. She's standing on all fours. She can't walk on her hind legs. You call that a primate? Chuck, our next contestant comes from Charleston, South Carolina. This guy looks more promising. He's up on his haunches and... Holy cow, he's picking up a nut. But let's go in for the close-up. Uh-uh-uh, no opposable thumb. Besides, his eyes are on the sides of his head. You call that a primate? Let's go to contestant number three. Felicia, a manatee from Florida, and she... Hey, wait a second. She doesn't even have hands or feet. What does she think we are, stupid? You call that a primate? And now our last contestant, Fred. Hey, this guy might just be the real deal. What do you say, folks? You call that a primate? That's right! He's standing up straight, and those forward-facing eyes and opposable thumbs make him the winner! All contestants on You Call That a Primate receive first-class travel on really wild airlines, as well as a year's supply of bugs and slugs. There are many different kinds of primates, familiar ones like monkeys and apes, and the lesser-known prosimians, sometimes called the lower or more primitive primates. But don't tell them that. Let's travel to the south of Africa, to the island of Madagascar, to meet a pint-sized prosimian called the Ai-Ai. No, no, I said Ai-Ai, not Aye aye. Aye aye. Aye aye. Aye aye. The aye aye comes out only at night to hunt for food. And check out how he does it. The aye aye listens with those big ears until he hears a tasty grub or insect moving around inside a plant. With a few taps of his extra long middle finger, he finds the grub's home. Using his sharp teeth, the eye eye bites open a hole, then he fishes around with that crazy finger. Yips! And in the time it takes to say goodbye, grub, that bug's been gobbled up. Mm. Want to meet another puny primate? Over in West Africa, the forests are just bounding with another prosimian. The bush baby, and I do mean bounding. A bush baby's legs are for leaping, but his hands are for grasping. This bush baby is about the size of a cat, and he looks like he's 90% eyeball. He sees great at night, which is a good thing, because that's when he runs around doing bush baby stuff, like finding food. Ants can't ruin a bush baby picnic because ants are a bush baby picnic. They're delish, but they're pretty feisty too. The question is, who can bite the other guy first? Of course, the bush baby always wins. Ouch! Oh, pass the salt out! Oh! Next, let's meet some of the better known primates. And who could that be? You're right, it's the monkeys! 
There are all kinds of monkeys all over the world. Howlers and capuchins in South America, langurs in Asia, colobus monkeys in Africa, and don't forget the baboons. These guys live on the African plain in groups called troops. And here's the littlest member of the troop, Big Ears. He's got a big problem, and it's not just his name. You see, his mum was killed by a leopard, so his aunt took over. She lost her own baby just a short while ago, so they make a good pair. Big Ears, like all primate babies, needs a grown-up around not only to feed him, but to hug him and to teach him important stuff, like how to pick bugs, twigs and dirt off other baboons. That's called grooming, and primates do it for three reasons. It keeps everyone in the group feeling close to each other, it keeps everyone clean, and hey, it's a free snack! Now, Big Ears also has to figure out where he fits in in the baboon group. Like all social animals, Primates need to know who the leaders are and who the followers are. Baboons have a unique way of showing respect. It's called presenting. You just turn around and show your behind. Uh, well, you let them see your posterior. Oh, oh, you just show them your rear end. And if you're a baby baboon, why take any chances? Just show respect to everyone. Think of the problems he'd have with a snapping turtle. Little Big Ears has a lot to learn, but don't worry, he'll make it. With the help of his aunt and others in the troop, he'll be a big guy in the baboon bunch in no time. Now that we've checked out the monkeys, it's on to the apes. Now, I know that some people think that monkeys and apes are the same thing. Wrong. But how do you tell a monkey from an ape? Well, one way is to walk up to a primate, take a deep breath, and say, Hey, you big monkey! Yeah, I'm talking to you! Whoa! He must be an ape! OK, here's the best way to tell monkeys from apes. Take a close look. Almost all monkeys have tails. Apes don't. And monkeys don't just have any old tails. No, sir. Many monkeys have a tail that's prehensile. That means it can grab things, almost like an extra hand. But uh, back to the apes. There are chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and gibbons. Like all apes, gibbons don't have tails. But they're talented. Come on, I'll show you. Let's go to Asia and the country of Thailand to meet the La Gibbons. Like most primates, gibbons scream and yell and sing to communicate. This couple has practiced one of their favorite songs for years to get it just right. The husband and wife love serenade. Besides keeping mum and dad feeling close, the song helps keep other gibbons from trespassing on their turf. Meanwhile, their teenage son sticks to himself and practices until he's old enough to move out and find a home of his own to protect. Then, just maybe, he'll have his own hit tune entitled... Get off my territory! Let's go westward back to Africa, to the country of Tanzania. Tanzania is just hopping with apes. The Gombe chimpanzees live here. One of their best friends is an amazing scientist who studied them for over 30 years. Her name is Jane Goodall. Even when I was very tiny, I was absolutely fascinated by animals. I think I first began to dream of going to Africa after reading Dr. Doolittle and Tarzan when I was about eight. I was absolutely fascinated with the idea of being out in the jungle, out with the animals, feeling a part of it all. But when Jane first came to Africa in 1960, the chimps weren't exactly lined up to meet her at the airport. It took months before she even saw one. Eventually, though, the chimps grew to accept Jane as a sort of a tall blonde primate with a British accent. Here's one of Jane's favorite chimps, a baby she named Flint. 
Like all baby chimps, there's nothing Flint loves more than riding his mom piggyback. Uh, chimpy back. Whatever. Flint's older sister, Fifi, can't seem to keep her hands off her cute baby brother. And hey, mom doesn't mind letting her babysit so she can have a breather. Besides, it's good practice for Fifi for when she has kids of her own. Jane learned a most amazing thing from watching Flint, Fifi, and her other chimp friends. Chimps actually make and use tools. Say you're a hungry chimp. You really want some termites, only they're down in a hole and you can't reach them. What do you do? You take a twig, rip the leaves off, get it the right size, then dip it into the hole. Voila! Termite a la stick! Camp ape, where apes aping humans is not allowed. Listen up, you apes! That's right, I'm talking to you! Now! Some of your behavior is downright embarrassing. For instance, you're checking yourselves out. You're cleaning yourselves up. You're using tools to get what you want. You're even playing games with each other just for the fun of it. Is that any way for a self-respecting ape to behave? If you ask me, you're acting like a bunch of humans. Now, here's what I want you to do. Jump around, screech a lot, Stuff your faces full of food and scratch yourselves in impolite places. You're apes! Just because you're related to those human beings doesn't mean you have to act like them. Dismissed! And now, time for an ape movie. Just your average greedy animal poachers minding their own business, wandering through Africa with guns and nets and really pointy spears until they ran into... The Killer Gorilla. Stop, stop, stop! Cut, cut! This is totally untrue. Whew. That's better. Oh. I'm sorry to get all worked up, but I just hate it when gorillas get a bad rap. Mountain gorillas live in Central Africa. They're so shy, most folks who live there have never seen one in the wild. But in zoos, gorillas are a major attraction, and up close it becomes very clear just how sensitive these big primates are. In 1988, Willie B was probably the grouchiest animal in the Atlanta Zoo. If you looked up the words bad attitude, you'd probably find his picture. Like other primates, gorillas are social animals. And Willie was depressed because he was lonely. He'd lived alone in a bear cage for 27 years. But Willie's life changed forever when a new director, Dr. Terry Maple, took over Zoo Atlanta. He decided to bring a bit of Africa back to Willie B. Dr. Maple and his team built a place for Willie to live that was just like his African home. And he wouldn't be lonely anymore, either. Thirteen new gorillas were loaned to the zoo to keep Willie company. At last, it was time for Willie to check out his new home. Cautiously, Willie stepped outside. For the next few hours, he went in and out of his room, gradually gaining the confidence to explore. Finally, Willie gets to gaze at the sky and feel new grass under his feet. Now that's what being a gorilla is all about. Want to hear another amazing gorilla story? <laughs> Meet Susie. Just like Willie B, Susie spent most of her life in isolation at a zoo in Alabama. Now she's at the Columbus Zoo in Ohio, raising her son, Colby. But when Susie left her old home, she left behind a longtime friend and keeper, Randy Reed. It made a big change in my life when she left. I was with this animal for 20 years, and she was one of my best friends. Now Randy's come to Columbus after nearly four years to see if Susie will still remember him. I think she will remember me. Of course, I'm hoping that she will. Susie! Come here, Suze. Susie. Come here, Suze. Come here. Come on. Come on, Suze. Come on. 
Come here, Sue. Come on. Hello, girl. Come on. Come on. Chimpanzees, monkeys. Our primate relatives seem so much like us. In a way, all primates are our brothers. Well, gang, it's sure been great hanging with you and the rest of the primates. But there are lots more really wild animals all across this wonderful world of ours. So be sure to join me on our next adventure. Until then, this is your pal Spin. Spin you later.